Thank you so much for tuning back in. This is part C, and my name is Leslie Donaldson, and this is the online Bible study of the story written by Max Licato. And we are almost finished chapter 15, God's Messengers. Elijah, Elisha, incredible miracles, and what's going on. It is truly miraculous. I did not know that Elisha received double portion of the blessings that were upon Elijah and what he was able to do. And now what Elisha is able to do in the name of the Lord by parting water and walk, walking on dry ground, he just saved a child who had been dead, laying dead on the floor. And he raised him. I didn't know that. But it's true. That's the power that, uh, of the God that we serve. So let's just keep reading. We are on the top of page 213. Let's keep going of, pay, of chapter 15. Now, it says, Before Elisha died, he ordered that Jehu be anointed, be anointed king of Israel. The same Jehu, filled with holy zeal, marched a regiment to the home of Jezebel in the town of Jezreel. Fearlessly, Jehu confronted her, calling for her servants to throw her from the window. So the cursed woman died that day, and later all of Ahab's offspring were killed. These events happened in fulfillment of Elijah's prophetic judgment years earlier. Then Jehu turned his sword on, minister, on ministers of the pagan god Baal, for surely the most subtle and per, pernicious threats lay in the subversion of worship from the true God. The Baal altars had to be destroyed before Israel could be secure. Many kings came and went in Israel and Judah. Some achieved godly reforms. Others made a mess of what they inherited. Jehoaz, Jehoaz son of Jehu, lost his army but kept the nation together. Around 797 BC, Elisha made one more pronouncement against the Arameans. Responding to the pleas of the desperate king Jehoash, Jehoash. King, once the king was assured of victory, Elisha died. Jeroboam II took reins and secured Israel's borders, but he never guarded Israel's soul. The worship of false gods and idol-making businesses flourished during his regime. During this prosperous period, a prophet arose with a stirring message of judgment and justice. The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoa, the vision he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam, son of Jehoas, was king of Israel. He said, hear this word, people of Israel. The word of the Lord has spoken against you, against the whole family I brought up out of Egypt. You only... You only have I chosen, you only have I chosen of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your sins. Proclaim to the fortress of the Ashad and the fortress of Egypt. Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria. See the great unrest within her as the oppression among her. They do not know how to do right, declares the Lord, who store up their fortresses, what they have plundered and looted. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. An army, an army will overrun your land, 
pull down your strongholds, and plunder your fortresses. The sovereign Lord has sworn, has sworn by his holiness. The time will surely come when you will be taken away with hooks. You la the last of you with fish hooks. You will each go straight out through the breaches in the wall and you will be cast out towards Haram, declares the Lord. I gave you empty stomachs in every city and lack of bread in every town, yet you ha have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I sent plagues among you as I did in Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword along with your captured horses. I filled your nostrils with the stench of your camps, yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what I will do to you, Israel. And because I will do this to you, Israel, prepare to meet your God. Seek the Lord and live, or he will heap, sweep through the tribes of Joseph like a fire. It will devour them. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy and will remnant on the remnant of Joseph. Surely the eyes of the so sovereign Lord are on the sinful kingdom. I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not totally destroy the descendants of Jacob, declares the Lord. Hosea followed as a prophet in Israel. He poured out his heart, pleading with a nation that focused to love the, or I'm sorry, he poured out his heart, pleading with a nation that refused to love a faithful God. Hosea warned the northern kingdom that if they did not repent and turn back to God, they would face serious consequences. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cursing, lying and murder, stealing and adultery. They break all bounds and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. A spirit of prostitution in their heart, they do not acknowledge the Lord. They are unfaithful to the Lord. They give birth to illeg illegitimate children. When they celebrate their new moon feasts, we will devour their, fe their, feeds, their fields. I'm sorry. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, like a great lion to Judah. I will tear them into pieces and go away. I will carry them off with no one to rescue them. Then I will return to my lair until they have borne their guilt and seek my face. In their misery, they will earnestly seek me. Now he will remember their wickedness and punish their sins. They will return to Egypt. Israel has forgotten their maker and built palaces. Judah has fortified many towns, but I will send fire on their cities that will consume, consume their fortresses. The days of punishment are coming. The days of reckoning are at hand. Let Israel know this. Because your sins are so many and your hostility so great, the prophet is considered a fool, an inspired person, a the inspired person, a maniac. Return, Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Though the prophets warned the people, the northern kingdom of Israel didn't listen. 
They harden their hearts and continue to ignore God's pleas to return to his ways. The king, kings of Israel led the people into spiritual and social chaos. Between Jeroboam II and Ho Hoshea, Ho I was saying it wrong, Hoshea, came a series of five other kings noted for doing evil in the eyes of the Lord. All of them came into power and or had their reigns ended through assassination. How long would the people turn their back on God? That is the end of an incredible chapter. And I can't help but actually think through this whole time and reading this and thinking about right now. We're almost May 1st. 2021 tomorrow today is april 30th i'm a day late yesterday i'm sorry i did not um uh, film on thursday i didn't have anybody to help me yesterday so uh today uh ken is here to help me uh do the taping and everything um so we're doing that today on a friday on april 30th 2021 and I think about today, and I think about all the right, all around the world, and what's going on, and the plague that we have, this COVID-19 plague, and, and everything that's coming from that. I want to say how thankful I am to be able to have this platform to read God's Word. To read God's Word openly, confess out of my mouth what this is saying. I am thankful to be able to read it, to be able to say it, to be able to post it, because what was going on here is some people are, they're killed for reading scripture. They're killed for trying to share. They're killed back then and even to this day. In different places around the world Christians are persecuted for reading the Word of God so I don't take any of that lightly I I th I am so thankful for that privilege of where I live and where I am and if if what is going on in our world today is directly a result from our sin and its punishment from God no different than how he has behaved in the first 15 16 chapters of this book he is a jealous God and he is alive it's a living God that we serve Father God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, the Trinity. And if, if this is what's going on, because that is what I believe, because of what I read in my faith, and, and we can't take a look at what's happening in our world today without thinking about God and what's going on. And we need to stay here but also, we also have to know too, there is the book of Revelation, and what does it say? And it's hard not to think about that and jump ahead because these are, the book of Revelation talks about how it's gonna be for us in our lifetime and what's gonna be happening. And some of those things, I don't know, it's, um, it's a wild world we're in right now. I just want to stay focused on God and, and not doing evil in the eyes of the Lord. Evil in the eyes of the Lord. That's not what I want to do at all. I really want to think about who I am, where my heart is, what comes out of my mouth during the day, just all kinds of stuff. It really makes me think a lot of things um, that chapter so there are questions for that chapter 
So let's read what some of those questions would be. Chapter 15 question Chapter 15 questions are number 1 what do you learn about faith from Elijah's ups, the victory over the prophets of Baal, and his downs, the depression in the desert? There was so much going on in this chapter. I will reread it as well because there was so much, so much stuff I didn't know. And so what do you learn from faith? about faith from Elijah's ups and downs? That's a very good question. And how can we apply that to our life? Because we are faced with ups and downs all the time. All the time right now. Our emotions go all over the place. And I know that, that that's happening. I, whether it's my family or friends, or our work, or here in the hotel industry, how incredibly frustrating it is with ups and downs and how do we keep our faith and what's going on there. Okay. And uh, number two, God, res God revealed himself to Elijah in a gentle whisper. What does this tell you about God's character and methods of communication? I can't wait to answer that question. I wish I could answer that right now, but I'm not going to jump right in with that. Number three, what steps can you take to hear the gentle whisper of God? Oh, how I just love that. I'll share with you next week what I mean by that. Number four, in what ways did the prophet Elisha live a life of faith? What an incredible life of faith Elisha lived. In what ways did the prophet Elisha live a life of faith? Identify the ways God was faithful to Elisha. That's question number five. Number six, how has God been faithful to you? Number seven, what specific message for social justice and spiritual faithfulness, do you think the prophets Amos and Hosea would proclaim today? I'm so glad that we are asking questions about today and this life and this world that we're in. And I really feel that it is such a test of our character, of, of who we are. And that are we swayed every day with what somebody says or the news or anything like that, that the second we hear something or whatever, are we sent into being afraid and nervous and anxious and not known what to do? I hear from so many people that that's what's going on. And I try to say, you know what, but you be the best version of you. If you don't like how somebody is treating you, then, then it helps you to know how you, need, how you need to behave. Or if you don't like how somebody is talking to you, you know then the proper way to speak. So, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Be the person that you, that you are. Don't be, don't be encouraged to be, to be as, 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 um, with bad behavior or treating somebody poorly. Just because somebody is doing that to you, it doesn't mean that you should do that to them. Just try to do the right thing even when you're so frustrated. This world has everybody just on edge, on edge. It's a different time. So be patient, be patient with others, be patient with yourself. And just really try to put God first where you are. That is, is so important to, to God. And so 
Let's read today from Jesus Calling, and uh, we want to go to April 30th here. Let's see here. And Jesus Calling is such a great book uh, written by Sa Sarah Young, Devotions for Every Day of the Year. I absolutely love it, and um, I just would like to read something here. Oh, May 1st is... Uh, Oh, oh, you know what? I, yeah, thank you. Um, what I have in here is something that my mom kept, and it is my, the, the note that was on the um, baby bassinet when I was born. And it has all the information on here, and I'm so happy to have it. Uh, it was very special to me. I, I don't have many um, pictures of my birth, um, but this is something that I have, and my mom kept it for me, and I, I couldn't be more happy with it. So I keep it in this book here. Um, so let's read uh, what it says for April 30th. Um, in fact, actually, I have it. I must have read it on a different April 30th that I've... Uh, um, bent the corner. So it must be important, and I'd like to read it for today. Jesus Calling, April 30th, it says this, When some basic need is lacking, time, energy, money, consider yourself blessed. Your very lack is an opportunity to latch on to me in unashamed dependence. When you begin a day with inadequate resources, you must con concentrate your efforts on the present moment. This is where you are meant to live, in the present. It is the place where I always await you. Awareness of your inadequacy is a rich blessing, training you to rely wholeheartedly on me. The truth is that self-sufficiency is a myth perpetuated by pride and temporary success. Health and wealth can disappear instantly, as can life itself. Rejoice in your insufficiency, knowing that my power is made perfect in weakness. James, that is found in James 1, verse 2. It's also found in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. That is exactly what I was just talking about. That in our weakness, we find him and we can have the most strength. Instead of it turning against us. What I'm reading in here is that when there was, when there was um, war, when there's earthquake, when there's no food, they, they refused to turn to him. Because people, when, when bad things happen, they turn to say, well, what kind of God is that? I don't believe in God. I don't like God. They, they are then become angry at God. Whereas it needs to be the opposite. That we need to see God is an almighty God. And love him even in the hard times. And ask for his help. Everything that was just said in here is 100% different than how the world tells us to deal with life and, and God and so forth. And so maybe really, really think about God and our world and what's going on today as, as a reflection of what happened in the previous chapters. This isn't a new God. This is the same God from the beginning of the Bible in the Old Testament to the New Testament to today. So we cannot just separate everything that ever happens in, in the scriptures to not be happening and playing out today. Very interesting. I'm going to think about it all week. So... Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the conclusion of Part C, the conclusion of Chapter 
15. And uh, next Thursday, we will be turning in next Thursday. I have help that day. And uh, we will go over the questions for chapter 15 and so forth. Okay? So thank you very much. Have a great week. I'd appreciate it if I could please hear from you. Um, whether you uh, comment below or you private message or anything else like that. I love to receive that emails. I get a lot of emails from our uh, viewers as well. So I thank you so much. I look forward to them and have a great week. God bless you and uh, may he be with you always. Bye now.